So, all of this comes to a head right now. It's the late 60s. We've got synthesizers. They're playing in popular music. They're on the radio. They're on records. They're starting to appear in ads. How do we, traditional musicians, gain access to these cool timbres? We want to do traditional music, but we want these new timbres because they're really interesting. Well, we have to buy a very big synthesizer and it will only play one note at a time because we don't have a keyboard that can play, control the multiple oscillators with multiple notes yet. But then suddenly we will. But what we have is a situation where we have a device that has multiple oscillators, multiple filters, multiple amps, controlled by multiple envelopes, and more. And we have a desire to play more than one frequency simultaneously from a keyboard controller. That is the result. That's what was happening at the end of the 60s, beginning of 70s. People are saying, okay, these synthesizers are great, but... I want to play chords. How do I play chords on this thing? Which is kind of a dumb question, but at the same time, it's also, well, why, why, why can't we do this? So around 1969, the keyboard was created that was kind of a trick. It had a low note priority aspect to it and a high note priority aspect to it. So it could output two different voltages and it would play the highest and the lowest note you're playing. So you could actually play two different notes. And this is important because this is where the term duophonic go comes from. It's a technique to achieve two note output. Two oscillators could be controlled separately frequency wise using this technique. And so this is where duophonic came from. All of the synthesizers that uh, broke the term duophonic, like set it out there, were using this technique. However, the fact remains, what we were trying to do was figure out how to play chords. And basically, there is an inclination on people's part to want to take a keyboard instrument and play it like a piano. In fact, when we start talking about articulation, that's where that comes from too. You want to be able to not only play chords, but you want the thing to behave like a piano and have each the, uh, the timbral and amplitude changes that exist on a piano, you want to have that sort of thing happen with your synthesizer. I mean, people typically did. And that's what they were. They would, rock musicians would come up to the keyboard of a modular synthesizer, they'd play a chord, they'll be like, why doesn't this play a chord? A lot of this has to do with the difference between academic electronic music and popular electronic music. There was a dichotomy that happened in, right around 1970 when rock and roll really discovered synthesizers and the academic world started moving away from voltage controlled synthesizers and why? Because there were more and more digital options or more and more compositional options, etc. So what we have are synthesizers with keyboards that cannot play chords. Then we start getting consumer model synthesizers, which were duophonic, like the ARP Odyssey or the Moog Sonic 6. However, they still weren't polyphonic. Now, even though those took place in 72, something else was happening in the background that no one seemed to notice. And I have only recently discovered this, and I can't believe it's not spoken of more often. And that is, in 1970, and demonstrably in 1971, Don Buchla, had a digitally scanned keyboard that could play three note polyphony or four note polyphony. And I guess because Don's, the, the style of music that was, I mean, a focus on true electronic music, capital E, capital M, was not about tonal, harmonic, melodic aspects. So the fact that Don Buchla came out with what amounts to a polyphonic, scan, digitally scanned keyboard long before anyone else did, and yet it didn't hit the market. All of these people who were screaming for a polyphonic synthesizer were not out there buying a, you know, Buchla 237 or 238. They were still waiting for the keyboard to come from someone else or something. But in any case, 
Tom Buchla is never recognized as being one of the first polyphonic synthesizer controlling keyboards of this time, but he had one. There's not much uh, to say about it. Unfortunately, there isn't, uh, you know, and also the style of music was different. So in any case, it was around this time that people started doing investigations into creating a digitally scanned uh, modular controller keyboard. Dave Rossum uh, really went gung-ho into that and actually did create a digitally scanned modular synthesizer controller. And in the first years of the 1970s, he was working on that, refining it, making it happen. 